right. I'm well, let's make, a, let's make a start. Um, I want to bring greetings from the BIWF uh, here in the UK. And uh, I want to bring a special mention from our president, uh, Michael Clark, who will be speaking to you later after I've waved you all goodbye. And uh, Michael has played a very, very prominent and distinguished part in BIWF down through uh, the years, not too many years. He's still a very young man, still able to make a contribution, <laughs> still able to take on the surf on Bondi Beach. But anyway, we're most grateful that the Lord has given us Michael. And uh, through him, of course, we have this wonderful magazine called Covenant Nations. It's really an exceptional magazine. And uh, people like Paul Owens have made an important contribution to it in the past. And we're most grateful for that as well. But listen, I want to leave as much time as I can for Michael. So um, I want to say my uh, uh, greetings to all the friends that I met when I was out in Australia in September 2017. And, you know, it's amazing to reflect back on that moment because it was a moment when we were in the dark. We were in the dark as regards a huge calamity or series of calamities that were going to overtake the world shortly after that date and that was uh, the appearance of this dreadful disease which has many variations and mutations this pandemic which started in the Wuhan labs in China which are under the control of the Chinese people's army it's a military installation and so we have to wonder whether they weren't meddling about with these uh, uh, microbes to see if they could uh, advance the possibilities for biological warfare but the pandemic has turned out to be a form of biological warfare anyway cutting, closing down economies leaving millions of people dead in India and other places like Brazil and uh, the struggle to find an antidote a vaccine and you know that reminds us of uh, the reading that we find in Romans chapter 8 22 it's plain to anyone with eyes to see that at the present time all created life groans in a sort of universal travail. Friends, we're feeling the contractions. And it's plain too that we who have a foretaste of the spirit are in a state of painful tension. That's a tremendous phrase. Sums up the way we feel. While we wait for that redemption of our bodies, which will mean that we have realized our full sonship in him we are saved by this hope and let re let us remember that the hope always means waiting for something that we do not yet see for whoever hopes when he can see but if we hope for something we cannot see then we must settle down to wait for it in patience and so my themes as i hand over to michael let's be full of hope yet let us also guard our spirits with patience. Thank you very much. Michael, I'm handing over to you. Thank you very much, um, Clifford. Um, well, good evening to all you great people in uh, Victoria. I see that you're making the earth shake in your area under the power of the Israel teaching. <laughs> um, oh, BBC TV had, TV had very little cover co coverage of the event. But um, thanks to Google, I did note, note the sad news that the Betty's Burgers in Chapel Street, Melbourne, is likely to be out of commission for five months. <laughs> so, well, thankfully, perhaps there haven't been any injuries with the earthquake or the earth tremor. I note that the ep epicenter was first given as 121 kilometers from Melbourne. Well, that's a significant number for us at uh, HQ here in the UK because we moved 121. Uh, we, we moved from 121 in Deodar Road, London, to 121 in Low Etherley. And um, that was exactly two times 121 miles north of our historic beginnings in London. And at the time, Psalm 121 was given to us by the Lord. Uh, in lifting up our eyes, as we did at that time, to the hills. Um, he was preserving our going out and our coming in, as the psalm um, gives us. Uh, interestingly, your um, 5.8, or what is it, 5.9, shaking, in, 
was at 9.15 a.m. or 5.55 minutes from the beginning of the day of the equinox. So five is equal to uh, grace, uh, standing for Father, Son, Holy Spirit, creation and redemption. So we're on good ground here, uh, even though it's shaking. When um, I, I've, I've entitled, entitled this uh, talk, um, The Oil of Understanding in a Dark World. But uh, when I first met my mentor, uh, Bernard Nicklin, and um, that was him, that was him, dear Bernard, <laughs> back in uh, 1965, 66 at the Swanwick Convention, men used to gather around him in the lounge and they'd say, Bernard, where are we now? <laughs> and he used to um, tell them what he thought at that time. But I must here also mention here, just at this point, the late Mrs. Dorothy Price of Swan Hill, Victoria, who collaborated with Bernard Nicklin and who I corresponded with uh, many times in those early decades of, of my studies. She talked about the great Southland being on the 153rd degree longitude on your eastern coast, how it was discovered and how the number 153, the number of the elect, was so prominent in, uh, in Australia. Well, 666 months later from 1965-66, we are in 2021. And I can tell you exactly where we are as the group of three leading nations of Israel, the United States, superpower, the United Kingdom, and Australia. Uh, Australia under the protection of the throne of David with the ensign in the corner, the Union Jack, symbol of our protection, the Alpha and Omega. And uh, of course, you've got the, the three of the five eyes at both ends of the earth, pushing the people together from the ends of the earth, as we read in Deuteronomy. And of course, in the sides of the north, the USA and Canada. So the continuing kingdom, that's the, that's the theme of our, a lot of our witnessing. The, continue, the continuing kingdom of God, we have Ephraim and we have Manasseh, the great, representing the great leading company of nations, promised to Joseph, named today as the Anglosphere. Uh, they're now back in operation uh, to defend civilization. And of course, this is what we call our Jerusalem. The name means city or foundation of peace. City or foundation of peace that is in a dark world, filled as it is with violence, as in the days of Noah, and indeed, as in the days of Lot. Back in 1965-66, genuinely, it could not have been foreseen by those wonderful people of the faith that imparted so much of the Israel truth uh, to us, that Britain would spend, actually spend, 47 years, that's 60 displacements, a period of 47 years, through the betrayal of our leaders in the pagan uh, European project. But in the words of the prophet Hosea to the, the 10 tribes, to adulterous Israel, and she shall follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them. And she shall seek them, but shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband, for then it was better with me than now. Hosea 2, verse 7. You see, what's happened is not a divorce of Britain from the EU. This is what they say, in, 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 this is what Varadka said in, in Southern Ireland, talked about a, a divorce, but it's, it, 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 they still say that because it was not a divorce, because it was not a legitimate marriage in the first instance, in the first place. It was a, an illicit affair by the covenant nation of Israel, Britain, repeating our original covenant violations 
uh, with the Lord in the northern kingdom uh, of Israel. What a vision we have as British Israel believers, a tremendous vision. And as I read a headline in the Daily Telegraph on Monday this week, with the AUKUS Treaty, global Britain is beginning to take shape. Well, it's a, it's a terrific headline. Um, but you see, this was a commentator. Commentators can see what's happening, but the church remains asleep, rejecting the vision. The lamps, their lamps have gone out when they should be burning brightly. In his um, Olivet Discourse, the Lord came to a point when he said, and at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Matthew 25, 3. I tell you, the rich men are weeping, according to James 5, 1 and 3. And I believe they're going to weep a whole lot more in the days ahead perhaps even immediately ahead. You've got perhaps the chart I was issuing for the, the background of this talk, and you can see indications there of economic tribulation. And um, looking at our chart, pointing to 390 years, uh, one month from now when billions of pounds uh, in 1631, billions of pounds of Spanish gold and silver sunk in a storm in the Caribbean aboard this galleon called Our Lady of Junkle. Well, it doesn't sound very good name, does it? But um, the omens were not good uh, when the Spanish galleon sailed out of the Mexican port of Veracruz on 14th of October, 1631. Two days before she sailed, the commander of the ship died. Well, you know, for men at sea, that's not a very good sign. Um, heading as it was for Cuba to drop off silver to pay the garrison. Then on the 17th of October, I might mention that anniversary uh, at some point as well. On the 17th of October, the fleet of 13 ships was hit by the first north wind and the jungle began to take on water. Another strong gale followed three days later, breaking the, the galleon's stern. The crew and the passengers fought and fought over the next few days to keep the water out of the uh, throwing uh, out, of the, out of the ship, throwing overboard anything and everything to help keep them afloat. And then on the morning of the 31st of October, Halloween as it happened, the jungle sank. And with only one lifeboat, seems like the Titanic, doesn't it? One lifeboat, just 39 survived. It was very much like the Titanic because as the ship went down, it sucked a lot of people um, with them. And um, three times 13 survived and uh, 311 drowned. They're talking about trying to recover all this gold and silver now because it's, it remained at the bottom of the Caribbean since then. Well, the following day, 1st of November, the anniversary coming up is All Saints Day. Um, we will be 29 years which is expectancy of judgment from November the 1st, 1992, when the Maastricht Treaty came into effect, formally establishing um, the European Union as it became. It was then, uh, a bit later, on the 13th of December, 2009, under the Lisbon Treaty, the Treaty of Lisbon, which gave the full legal personality to the EU, was signed on the 13th 
of December 2009, and which significantly, I think, the then Prime Minister, Gordon Brown, was the only leader not to sign the treaty with all the other 27 leaders. He turned up hours late and signed it later in that day uh, after offering a, a political excuse for, for not being there at the time. It didn't go down too well. Uh, but I think it's interesting that uh, uh, he was reluctant to, to, to make it there for the, for the big signing. Um, why, we might ask, did the leaders of the European Union choose Lisbon? Um, these people who from the very beginning aimed at um, constructing a United States of Europe, bringing an end to the United Kingdom, making the Westminster Parliament no more powerful than a county council, and the four nations of the EU merely regions, uh, four nations of the UK uh, merely regions of the EU. Why did it all climax at Lisbon? Well, I feel that the overruling providences of the Almighty for the Israel nations spread abroad across the globe, that these providences are both magnificent as they are awe-inspiring. Most significantly is the fact that the 1st of November 2021 is also the anniversary of the great Lisbon earthquake of November the 1st, 1755, which devastated Portugal and undermined the, the faith of the people of Europe at that time, the Enlightenment and all that. The earthquake struck on, a, on an important religious holiday at the weekend. It destroyed almost every important church in the city. It caused anxiety and confusion among the citizens of a staunch and devout Roman Catholic country. Theologians and philosophers focused and speculated on the religious cause and the message, seeing the earthquake as a manifestation of, of divine judgment. Importantly, uh, November the 1st coming is going to be 300 displacements, 300 286.1 days, plus 31 years, deity, from that great devastating earthquake at Lisbon in 1755. 300 is a very important number. Um, the right time times 10, and um, it seems to be ominous. And uh, I asked the question, in view of the 390 years coming up from the, uh, the sinking of the, the lady, Our Lady of Jungle, are we, I wonder, about to see a sudden and devastating collapse of the financial construct of the European Union? Because that would lead quite quickly, I think, to its political collapse, not long afterwards. Time will tell, but I mean, we have got the, the change of regime in Germany. Angela Merkel is, is leaving before the end of the month. Um, uh, President Mer Macron, he's uh, uh, all fired up about this. Uh, you, you make, you're making a treaty with, with America and cancelling the order for submarines. And, uh, Boris has said um, to him, I think, last night, um, uh, get real or something, something to that effect uh, in French. Um, but I mean, the thing is that um, when you think of what happened at Lisbon uh, and that devastation, um, a lot of the people all went down to the, to the quayside to get out of the city. And then suddenly the earth opened up and it took them all down. And... Um, you know, there were tens of thousands that lost their lives at that time. So um, I believe that we are at a, at a very uh, important and interesting point. This, this treaty that, do, that is uh, being made with uh, this defence treaty for Australia has come 200 times 153 solar days um, from the uh, French financial crisis of uh, 19... 
1836. And of course, it was the, the date for the entry into the Hall of Judgment uh, in the Great Pyramid. And it was 1936 was also 1936 was the, year, the great year of, of the abdication of the throne. It was the year of three kings. 42 years later, 1978 was the year of three popes. And um, it seemed that 42 is a number of confusion. So, you know, when the, uh, the Pope suddenly died, Pope John Paul I, a month after being made Pope. And um, so uh, there's a connection there with the, the thrones, the two thrones. There's only two great thrones left in the world. Uh, one is the British royal throne and the other is the papal throne. And um, we know which one is going to last and which one is going to endure. So we've come to the, the point where I say we are privileged. I believe the privilege has been afforded uh, all of us in 2021 to see what is in fact the return to our destiny. That is of leading the nations in peace. We used to have a, a poster uh, from the early years proclaiming that fact that our destiny was to lead the nations in peace. We're not a great um, uh, military power to, to crush everybody. We're, we're there to defend. We're a sharp threatening instrument, not a battle axe as was wrongly said in the early years by some of our people. The battle axe of course was uh, the Soviet Union um, at the time to destroy 80% um, of the German army in the last war, last world war. You see, when disobedience made it impossible for the two houses or kingdoms of ancient Israel to function, it was forcibly moved away from its original foundations. Um, when the foundations shake sometimes, and particularly in our history, there's been a great purpose to it as it was uh, with moving the Northern House and most of the House of Judah as well, out of the, out of that, the Middle East into Assyria and then through the, the Caucasus and through the passage of the Israelites into al Sarath and into, into Europe. And um, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, the popular NIV, New International Version Bible, 1979, I've got a copy of it, started off by including the words, the house of Israel and the house of Judah. The later versions have omitted that. And uh, they just say the people of Israel and the people of Judah. They're changing it all the while. And um, the new neutral gender version of course, uh, uh, going a whole step further of the NIV. So what are they doing? They're dumbing down the history of the two kingdoms and the fact that the majority of the Hebrew race went into Assyria and after into Europe migrating to the West. Our Lord speaking to the Pharisees said the literal kingdom of God was in the midst. In the midst of them. I mean, that's a better rendering of the Greek entos in Luke 17, 20 and 21. It's um, a pity, really, that it was rendered within you. The kingdom came not with observation, uh, that not being the outward show of pagan Rome, which was also in the midst of the Pharisees at that time. In our day and age, the observation or the outward show is evidenced, has been evidenced in the, still evidenced in the European Union and in the single Euro currency. The world has witnessed the whole show of that uh, politico-economic eclipse. Of course, that's what happened when the sun, the moon, and the stars were darkened and the powers of the heavens or the powers of the heavenly ordered kingdom were being shaken according to Matthew 24, 25. This being the sovereignty of the royal throne of David, that's represented by the sun in Psalm 89, 
are English common law extant throughout the great company of Israel nations represented by the, the moon at the woman's feet in Revelation 11, and the integrity of what was and then we still feel that the British Commonwealth itself represented by the stars that um, so the, the sun, the moon and the stars, we've seen this, this darkening and it hasn't been discerned, it hasn't been understood by the church, by the teachers that should have been alert to this, that should have been, um, their lamps should have been burning with the oil of understanding. The stars were indeed falling from the heavens and you in Australia became linked to trade with China. But now the wind of change, remember that term in, by Harold Macmillan back in Cape Town in 1960? The wind of change is blowing throughout the continent, he said. Well, the wind of change has changed direction after all those years. Almighty God has not forgotten his people because he has declared a wonderful verse in Isaiah 49 verses 16 and 17 behold i have graven thee upon the palms of my hands graven thee upon the palms of my hands thy walls are continually before me thy children shall make haste thy destroyers and they that make thee waste shall go forth of thee there they are his hands, graven upon his hands. How can the church, how can uh, the teachers, the theologians say it's spiritualized, say it's, it's so much history. Plan A has been dispersed and uh, been forgotten. Plan B is the church, uh, is the kingdom. Well, it's a poor shape of a kingdom, isn't it? When we look at the church today, the sun, the eclipse of the sun, moon and stars is over and is over forever. And the, we've seen the diamond ring again after a total eclipse. Light returns to the earth very quickly. The diamond ring shines. And I believe we're seeing that the European Union is creaking in all of its structures. Most of all, the European Central Bank and um, the European single currency. Portugal, Italy, Ireland, Greece and Spain, they've been known as an acronym from the 1990s as the pigs. Um, they began to su suffer the strains of growing debt and economic vulnerability with the exchange rate and things like that. So as I come to the end of these remarks, these few remarks, um, I would say positively, forcefully, let us all take courage as British Israel believers. Let us rise up. Let us praise God standing strong in the faith, and it is the faith. Pa Prince Charles in the past talked about he wants to be uh, a defender of faiths. Well, I think he's come away from that because he's had some advice. He's standing as defender or will stand at some point uh, for the faith. For he who make, he who made the Lord made unbreakable covenants uh, with our fathers shall do that which he has purposed. And that is to redeem his nation and make us again his wife. As at the first, that's the words of Hosea, we shall be restored to the Lord as the wife of Jehovah, as at the first. And of course, the marriage supper um, takes place in Middle East tradition before the wedding. And um, I believe we could be on the point uh, very sincerely um, from uh, the all, all prophecy for, of the first resurrection. There is a a time of, a, of, of when the first of the first of the resurrection, uh, the, the first 
part of the resurrection generally takes place with a wave offering. And um, Mr. Rand in America used to talk about this, taking about taking the jewels uh, away before um, Babylon is finally destroyed. So let us be alert, let us be aware of where we are. October the 6th in Great Pyramid terms is the anniversary of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ in BC 4. So if October is going to be important, we may see October the 6th uh, being uh, significant as well. These things go in a, in a pattern in terms of economics. Tom Price, one of our own lecturers passed away, he said there was a, a syncopated action he used to talk about events in May and September and October for economics. And um, in the background, we've got, of course, uh, the whole thing with America with this trillions of, of debt. And they're about to uh, do something terrific, I think. There may be a, a reset in Europe, but there may also be a great reset in the United States. So let us look um, to the promises given us, the covenant promises, and trust day by day in these days, because we are in a moment of time, which is uh, when the oil in our lamps uh, needs to be burning brightly, and when we need to proclaim that truth of the faith that we have been privileged to be uh, part, part of and given to us by the Lord. Amen. Well, um, I mean, I think it was, um, I think it must have been an enormous loss for Europe. Um, I mean, I got a bit of history of this um, uh, back in um, uh, earlier this, this year, was it? Um, oh no, early last year, there it was. Um, there was a, an article about this um, hunt for the El Dorado at the bottom of the sea. And um, uh, billion, I mean, in terms of gold and silver, precious jewels, um, you know, it, it's like a Titanic, isn't it? Mm. In terms of um, all the rich men or the, uh, that were heading for New York and they impelled, um, impl they got the Captain uh, Smith to, to step up the speed so they can get to New York uh, on time when the markets opened. And of course, it made collided with the iceberg. Um, mm. So it was like a, like a Titanic. And uh, I guess it had a huge effect upon Europe itself at that time. But I mean, it's a key terminal point. And in terms of time measures, it's the law of terminals. The beginning event must relate to the end event. So um, when you've got 390 linking up the two if the two uh, dates, um, and, we're, and we're looking like uh, there's an important, um, if you like, uh, assessment coming in America for the, uh, for, for, for the Federal Reserve, and you've got the creaking conditions in, in Europe, change of patterns in Europe, something would be indicated, I think. I think uh, from what we hear behind the scenes, there is something enormous coming in terms of a um, a reset of the American finance. Mm. And um, because, uh, I mean, that was what President Trump was um, moving towards. And, um, uh, you know, uh, it's been going on for years and it will disinherit all these um, uh, conspiratorial people in the international banking system overnight. And um, it will be an amazing event. And uh, uh, of course, you know, people's finances will just be transferred to the new system. They won't lose out, but it'll shake, uh, it'll shake the earth financially. And of course, ma many political um, treaties and systems and namely Europe, of course. And uh, maybe indeed um, that's what's indicated with uh, um, links to the, uh, the Treaty of Lisbon and, uh, and the great earthquake. Yes, we find that the same here, um, and it's um, it's a very um, and yet you've got people. Uh, there's a couple of ministers that talk online. Church of England um, 
ministers and um, one is high church and one is not but they're really uh, stirring things up um, and of course there's a lot of <coughs> medical people that uh, are very much against what has happened with the mm. um, you want to vaccinate the whole world and even talking about vaccinating children of five and things like this that, yeah yeah um, compuls getting towards compulsory state there's something very sinister um, about this and um, people like uh, Fazi or mm. he, he, uh, the, uh, uh, he's called Saint Fazi is he, in America but uh, you know there's a lot of money behind all of this and um, uh, is it is it is it is an experimental vaccine isn't it yes if it they is. call it a vaccine yes. and uh, they don't know I mean a lot of people have died quite honestly um, from the vaccine and well, um, we can give you the figures here right right yeah. throughout the Commonwealth of Australia it's something like 435 have died yeah. from yeah. the vaccine itself and 486,000 side effects none of it's been reported none of it yeah. now that's that's the TGA that we have out here has yeah. certainly got it there but you've got to find where the numbers yeah. are they're getting uh, medical conditions they've never seen before and they don't know how to treat it. So there's something very, very, if, if the DNA is involved, yeah. which it is, um, then it's very serious indeed. So, um, you know, uh, when it all comes out, um, there'll be a real big reset, I think. Yeah. But um, it, of course, the, the people in power just at the moment are, are saying you've got to be vaccinated. Um, to do this, that, and the other. That's right. That's right. I mean, it, it's so plain. You know, you it, it, it's hidden in plain sight. Um, Charles Jennings in uh, yeah. in Oklahoma, uh, Tulsa. He, he's a, a minister there, and truth in history. And he, he says one time, I just cannot get my head around it, he said, that they cannot see this. Mm. And um, I mean, it's so plain in scripture. Two thirds of the Bible is prophecy. You know, what are they, uh, why can't they see it? And um, of course it is, it is a blindness. We know it's a blindness. Um, mm. the you know, when the times of the Gentiles is finished, Blindness is removed. That's what we get in Romans. So, um, you know, the blindness must be removed. But in terms of um, uh, the Elijah message, if it was Elijah himself uh, that came, I mean, the whole world would be convinced, wouldn't they? But of course, it, do it says it doesn't stop the terrible, great, great and terrible day of the Lord coming. Um, He'll send you Elijah before the great and terrible day of the Lord. So, um, you know, this explains all the falling away uh, since the second, end of the Second World War. Um, they didn't believe. Um, they didn't understand the, what was being said to them. They were blind. They were deceived by um, false uh, prophets, false teachers, and um, those that were blind. And um, this is the reason um, you see, it's the mystery of the kingdom, isn't it? And um, a, a mystery is always, um, there's a deeper understanding. Uh, prophecy is really only understood, in a sense, when it's fulfilled. And um, the Lord said, I've told you before that when it has come to pass, you might believe. So it's only when it, these things are there, clear before us, that we truly see uh, what's what. As far as um, mm. Russia and China is concerned, the question there, um, actually, um, we often say, well, it's not much about China, and yet, um, in the Bible, but yet, indeed, it's part of this um, uh, a nation far off, which the Bible talks about. And, um, of course, you're going back, we've just come 90 years from when Japan attacked, attacked China, and... Um, all the repercussions from that is what's led to the communist takeover in China and the whole thing now. So this has been building up uh, for 90 years. And um, of course, uh, there's something that needs to be 
cause us to actually call upon the Lord. If my people, which are called by my name, shall hearken and, and call unto me, how are we going to call? What's going to... Im, im, I mean, there's been no church leader come out over the, over the virus particularly. Um, what's, going to what's going to impel them uh, to, to actually call upon the Lord? And maybe it is a confrontation with the, the false prophet system of Islam, which is invading us. Um, I mean, this is something that wasn't seen uh, in the times of, of the Second World War with the three um, unclean spirits. The false prophet wasn't really identified at that time, and we see it now. Well, next year is 1290 years from the Battle of Tours, when um, the invasion of the, of the Moors from Spain reached a, a point in, in France, and um, it was the Battle of Tours which in 732, which um, turned the whole thing around. But seven, um, when it was 2001, it was 1290 years from when the, the Moors invaded, and that was when we had this attack at 9-11 on America. So it's, um, it's going to be three times seven years to next year, and maybe there's going to be, a, a, you talk about revolution in, in Australia, um, there's talk of about something like that in France, in terms of the, uh, the powers of Islam in, in their midst now. So um, there's big events coming, I think, in terms of uh, the Lord lifting up an ensign and a standard um, against the false prophet, and um, of course reviving us uh, as, as, a, as, a, uh, as, as an instrument to actually defend freedom. Where, where is the place of safety in this world now? Um, they're, they're all, they talk about we're racist here, but I mean, they all want to come here um, to actually <laughs> escape, escape the, uh, the, the trouble. And uh, of course, the, the vision is, in the time of, of this time, is the sea and the waves are roaring, which is a, a symbol of the whole seething mass of humanity in a seething ferment of discontent. And um, uh, of course, when the disciples were in the boat and the, the storm was on, the Lord came walking to them on the water. I mean, it was in the fourth watch of the night and that is the most uh, deadly sort of part of the, of the night. And, um, you know, they were crying, Lord save us. And it, it may be that, um, you know, when the foundations are shaking, which is the foundations of all the, the nations are, are crumbling, uh, as we see um, uh, with all of this uh, illegal migration, um, they're coming in like a Noah's Ark. I mean, we're like a gigantic Noah's Ark at the moment, as in and the drown, days of drowning, Noah. Drowning people generally want to cry but out. I mean, people, it, don't they? it was the Lord, that God, that shut the door yeah. in the end. No, it didn't shut the door. Yeah. So... I'm looking forward to the time when God shuts the door and um, if the flood is coming symbolically and, uh, you know, there is judgment in the earth in that sense, um, we, shall, we shall survive upon the, the, the waters of judgment. And um, maybe it's got to come to that. But, um, you know, it's when things happen as, as they do now. I mean, people must be getting pretty uh, frightened, I think. When they see um, all of this trouble, people come. Who ever thought that they would be coming in hundreds every day across the, the English Channel uh, in these boats? And um, you know, it's 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 it just shows you that um, uh, something almost sort of the final crisis is happening. And then the attack on the throne uh, is the final sort of onslaught, if you like. And um, I think the fact that um, we've got this Platinum Jubilee coming next year, it's never happened before in our history, um, the 70 years. And, uh, you know, that is this, 70 is a number of the, for the restoration of Jerusalem and um, our Jerusalem. So we've had the Victoria and Elizabeth, two women, Diamond Jubilee reigns, and we're now coming as a double witness, and we're now coming to the Platinum Jubilee. We're making plans to have a, a trilogy of publications next year, and it's going to be very significant. And um, Big Ben, uh, or the Elizabeth Tower, as it is, is now ready to have all the scaffolding taken down, and it will be sounding uh, out again by June next year. So 
um, Ben, you know, it's named after Benjamin. And um, it, it's a bell that is, is, is going to toll again and, and the vi be visible. It's symbolic mm -hmm. of the restoration of, yeah. of Israel, I think. So let's hope for the, uh, what's going to happen next year uh, with the, um, the Platinum Jubilee. I think that's very significant. Well, Farrah Fenton points that out in um, uh, about the, the battle axe. It's the hammer to break in pieces. And of course, the sickle to cut down at the time of harvest. So it's, it's hugely significant. Mm. But that map with A.J. Ferris uh, it points out the, uh, the Arctic, doesn't it? Yes. And of course, it's the, um, the land of unwalled villages is actually North America. Yes. Um, yes. Because the, the, there's been no castles, you know, like we have in, in Europe. And um, it's the longest undefended border in the world with United States and Canada. And Canada itself is an old Indian word meaning village. Um, so it's, it is the I land of unwalled villages. Really and now the ice, you know, recently they had three, <laughs> Russia had three atomic submarines, uh, nuclear submarines, uh, break the ice in, in the Arctic simultaneously, just to show that they could do this and threaten us th over the Arctic. And, um, you know, in, in Psalm 83, it talks about our enemies being Confederate. And uh, that's very, that's the, that's the point, I think, in the end, that uh, Russia and China will, will be Confederate. And uh, you've got Iran as well. And um, to actually destroy it, try to destroy us. So the weapons there, they're actually constructing these hypersonic weapons. Um, they're probably uh, ahead of America in, in many respects in that. And um, it's going to be very, I mean, they could take out a, our new aircraft carrier um, in, almost uh, at will. So, I mean, uh, we're going to have to be um, aware of this and the fact that uh, that threat may come at some point in, in the future. Because there's a point between, um, you know, the, the actual bringing in of the kingdom, um, which I don't think will be in a single day. It's a process and we don't understand fully the process because it hasn't happened. But I mean, there is this gradual um, taking, taking a, a, a sparing the Lord people. And if, we mentioned earlier about 1945, and that was the central line in the king's chamber of the pyramid. Um, and uh, around the walls of the uh, king's chamber, it's that there's a hundred stones. And it's, it has been thought that this is, is, is talking of a hundred years. And um, of course, when we get to 2045, this great procession of the equinox uh, is complete in the heavens. So, um, uh, you know, the hundred stones and from 1945, which was the, you know, a, a terminal year for the for the war at that time, and the United Nations came into being, and um, uh, to 2045, this is what we're seeing, and maybe it's 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 going to come to that. But what happens before that, in terms of the midnight hour, the cry, and um, you know that we do have two Thessalonians, and uh, uh, you know. The, the trump shall sound and dead in Christ shall rise first and, and those that are alive shall remain. And, and it, you know, there is this thought that um, we don't sort of support the rapture in the sense of taking away and never coming back. It's the Lord that's coming to gradually take authority and to take up the throne. And, but there'll be those that'll have to be trained, that'll have to be schooled perhaps to reign with him, we don't know. Is there, are things going to happen naturally in a supernatural way? You know, there's all of these thoughts. So uh, we need to be ready. We need to be prepared for um, uh, whatever, whatever transpires. And um, uh, let's, let's believe that and that, uh, you know, that, that there is a, a great hope and great trust in the Lord for uh, uh, he's not going to see his own destroyed. Yeah, I mean, I, the sign uh, is certainly, I think, to do with the constellations. Um, you know, there's been uh, quite a lot of thought about um, Leo and um, the, the yeah. whole 
far there. And um, in Wales here, on a big scale, there's a star pattern laid out on the land. And uh, it hasn't really come to, to people's notice yet. But um, uh, you see Leo and Virgo are the beginning and the end of the pre precession of the equinox. And um, the, the Sphinx is a combination of, of, of the lion and the woman. And it, it's, uh, you know, the procession, the beginning and the ending of the pre precession of the equinox. So um, yeah. Yeah, I think that is so. I mean, actually, um, uh, you know, you, you, we, we have also had a sky and a sign. This, this happened on the 27th of April, 1944, just before D-Day. My mother saw it and it was like a, a cross a red cr cross in the sky just before D-Day. And um, uh, there was a, a Reverend Harold Green in, in Ipswich, where we were living at the time. And uh, he, he preached a sermon on it and the, the church was packed um, because it, they did feel yeah. it was a sign. So I mean, things have happened like that, but I do think it's going to be, uh, you know, you've got the Bible in stone, We've got the Bible printed in the Word, and we've got the sign in the heavens mm. by the two yeah. or three two or three witnesses. Um, these things are established, so uh, there is something in the heavens, undoubtedly, um, that will uh, be spot on at that time. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't do these things personally, you know, into, but I do see things happen. Like my my daughter yeah. uh, was was actually um, at her. I'd, I've been working with these numbers, and then I got married in the forties. And um, Sarah, when when she was born, she was two five two o grams in weight, and the little pink card was given to me, and uh, it was incredible. I mean, two thousand five hundred twenty. It meant so much to me, and uh, I didn't realise until the time afterwards that when you go into Imperial measure it's 88.8 .8 answers the number of jesus in greek yep. is, is, eight, is 888 so the opposite of the, the geometry the opposite of the the seven times punishment 2520 years is um, jesus uh, in, in name delivering us and um so uh, but actually yeah. I, I i actually come to 30,000 days in my life on october the 6th which is the anniversary of the Lord's birth in the pyramid. So, um, you know, it, it's sort of, it, it's up there before me. And uh, I think, well, gosh, you know, it's a witness um, as to what we, uh, Howard, Howard Rand's life was amazing in that respect um, because he, li he lived for a multiple to the day of um, 1335 days, which is the number of blessing. So, I mean, he had, a, he had a great minister and he lived to 102. And at the end of the day, he lived for a multiple of 13, 35 days. I think it was 15, but I, I know it was a yeah. multiple of 15, 13, 35. So there we are. Um, these things are hidden, mm. but we see them. And the Lord says, so much the more as you see the day approaching, forsake not the assembling of against yourselves together. There's also a thought, when I looked at... Um, Boris, our Prime Minister, and Joe Biden sitting there with their black masks on <laughs> just yesterday, um, and everybody has had these masks. What was it that when Lazarus was raised from the dead by the Lord, yeah, he was all wrapped up. Come in. <laughs> he was, you know, he got a mask on, didn't he? And yeah. the Lord said, loose him. Loose him. Yeah, yeah so let him he, loose. Yeah, is, is this symbol of the mask around the world, you know, like, like a Lazarus sort of thing coming forth? And um, it just needs this word, loose him and yeah. let him go, you know? And um, I think that's, that's probably, it could be an indication that, um, you know, we're about to see this Lazarus restoration on re and, and of Israel, but also a literal resurrection of... Um, uh, at uh, of, of the Lord's uh, chosen, I mean that's uh, they, a, they a couldn't real... let they couldn't let Biden loose uh, because he would work his way back to the care home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sleepy Joe, Sleepy Joe, yeah. yeah, Sleepy Joe. I mean, yeah. actually, to forget 
the name of your prime minister when they really? made that big announcement um, just the other day. I mean, it was rather pointed, wasn't it? Hey, eh? um, he said uh, uh, that uh, that 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 chap from down under. <laughs> uh, did you see that? Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, it was a, it was a shame because uh, um, you know it was a big. Only 10 people knew that was going to happen in our government. And it came on 10 o'clock news here uh, at night. And um, it was a real quite a shock, actually. Um, I mean, Nigel Farage says, you usually hear about these things. He said, but I, I sat down there and there it was, you know, for the first time. Um, and, uh, and, yet, and the only one down point was when Joe Biden forgot the name of uh, the Australian Prime Minister. Mm. And there we are. <laughs> Ladies and friends, I have I have uh, another meeting to go to because it's the morning yeah. here. We have to we have to work. So I'm about to say farewell to you all. It's been tremendously stimulating, an absolutely amazing triumph of technology for the British Israel World Federation. And yeah. uh, God bless you all. And it's been wonderful to speak to you. So farewell and farewell from Anne. She's busy in the office administering Bloomfield Presbyterian Church. She she has to cope with all the registration of all the people all the masks all of that kind of stuff sometimes she yeah. doesn't finish till 11 o'clock at night so god bless Clifford, you all thank you farewell Clifford, yes. thank you Joe. on behalf you of all, thank you very much family. <laughs> yeah philippa philippa says as well she's yes. she's downstairs doing work yes. on the magazine yeah well, after yeah. her too yeah, and the family. Yeah. Well, yeah. so excited yeah. to hear about the new grand it's been grand. it's been really great i've really enjoyed it and uh, i trust uh, we shall do it again sometime. We'll do it again sometime. Yeah. Yeah, it's wonderful. Michael, yeah. Michael, on behalf yeah. of everybody, we just want to say thank you very much for being so very, very generous with your time. And uh, oh, we well. appreciate it enormously. Thank you. Well, it's, it's well my done, privilege. Mate. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you well, ever so much. It's our privilege to receive yeah. your good blessing. Thank you. <laughs> thank and have you. a great day. We're Thanks just we're about to go to bed and you're going, you've right. got the day yeah. ahead of you. That's it. That's it. God bless you all. Yeah, God bless. Thank you. Yeah. Bless you. Yeah. Bye.